Today we are continuing on our series of five reasons why this team can win an NBA championship this year. You know, we're going through, you know, like the top 20 or so teams in the NBA. So unfortunately, my Hornets won't make the cut. But today we're talking about the Brooklyn Nets and five reasons that they could win an NBA championship this year. Now, is it unlikely? Yes, but it is not completely out of the realm of possibility. Crazy things happen in sports. Nick Claxton, Cam Johnson, McCall Bridges, nice little big three they've got built up here in Brooklyn. It should continue to get better and better over the next few years. Lonnie Walker, Dennis Smith Jr., nice free agent additions, and you bring in Noah Clowney and Derek Whitehead in the draft. I think this is a team that, you know, they were they were set to rebuild after KD and Kyrie wanted out. Instead, they kind of retooled, okay, with, you know, a little bit less of a roster, but with many, many more picks down the line. So make sure to like the button, hit the subscribe button if you do enjoy at any point, stick around for the full video. Now let's go ahead and look at reason number one. The Clamps, they were number four in defensive rating last year after the deadline, which is, of course, when basically their team came together for this year, and they were number one in blocks per game with 6.2, Nick Claxton being a big-time reason for that. They also have the potential to be really, really good defensively on the perimeter. You talk about this trio right here, all in the starting lineup of Dorian Finney-Smith, McCall Bridges, and Cam Johnson. That is an elite defensive trio all 6'7 plus, can guard the 2 through 4 really well, can switch everything. It's going to be really tough to score on these guys. And, you know, that's not even taken into account. They still have Ben Simmons on the roster, the former Defensive Player of the Year candidate, year in and year out. If he can ever decide to play basketball again, that would be huge for the Nets because that gives you an even more versatile, more potential on the defensive side of the ball. Absolutely huge if he can uh, shake off whatever he's been doing. Now off the bench, you also have Dennis Smith and Royce O'Neal. Dennis was a really, really good perimeter defender for the Hornets last year. Royce O'Neal has been, you know, a 3 and D guy for his entire NBA career. And at this point, a veteran, very serviceable. Now, number two, let's take a look at these X factors here. Because if these X factors play well, play up to what they can, it could be huge for the Brooklyn Nets. People could not see this coming. Cam Thomas, first off. I mean, we all know the story with Cam Thomas. He had four starts last year as a Brooklyn Net, and in three of them, he put up 40 points. Absolute insanity. On the year, he averaged almost 11 points a game, close to two rebounds, an assist and a half, and that right there tells you, yes, he shoots it efficiently, 44-38 splits. Yes, he can score it. He just doesn't do anything other than scoring the basketball. Doesn't pass it, doesn't rebound, doesn't play defense. So Cam Thomas, if he can do a little bit of everything this year, maybe he gets a little bit of a regular rotation spot. And then if they can get peak Ben Simmons back, who, remind you, he averaged 16.5 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists during his prime in Philadelphia. 2.1 steals, 1 block, 57% from the field. That is how good that dude was as a 76er, and people were just hating on him because Philly has the worst fans in sports. Hey, if those two X factors can do something this year, then it'd be great. Now, number three, their three-point shooting. Number five in three-point percentage last year, and their two best players on the offensive side of the ball, well, two best overall players, both shoot it 37% plus from three on six-plus attempts a game. That I mean, you need your two stars to be efficient if you're going to win in this league. They have that. Um, both of them play defense as well, so I like this this built, you know, the way this team is built in Brooklyn. Um these two guys shoot at 39% from three, and then they drafted Dariq Whitehead out of Duke, who shot at 43% from three last year on four attempts a game, which was shocking, honestly. Um, if you watched Dariq Whitehead play last year, I wouldn't have thought he shot at 43% from three, but hey, he hit a lot of threes. And, I mean, he only shot at four times a game, only played 20 minutes. We'll talk about him more later, though. Now, number four, McCall Bridges breakout, whatever you want to call it. Last year, once he got traded to the Brooklyn Nets, he was an entirely different monster because he went from being like the fourth or fifth option to the number one guy. He averaged 26 points, four and a half rebounds, and two and a half assists per game as a net in limited minutes. He was also extremely efficient, and that's something you don't see much in guys that have a really increased usage rate or increased volume, but 48% from the field, 38% from three, one steal, very solid. Um, this was a 27-game sample size, over 34 minutes a game. So not bad at all for McCall Bridges, or McCall, 
coming over to the Brooklyn. I don't know why I called him Nico. <laughs> uh, but he is 27 years old, will be 27 years old this year. So going right into the prime of his career, right in time to be a Brooklyn Net. And, it, you know, it's a good time to be a Brooklyn Nets fan. Um, let's take a look at the new guys here. Uh, this is reason four why I think they could make a little bit of a run. The new guys, they've, you know, acclimated into this system, this offense. 8.3 points a game, 2.4 rebounds, 1 assist for Derek Whitehead last year at Duke. And, yeah, those numbers are not going to blow you away. But 43% from three on four attempts, very, very, I mean, that's exceptional. In 20 minutes a game, which is, you know, the per 36 is on that. You're looking at about 15 Five and two on what? Forty-three percent shooting from the field, very solid. Noah Clowney, ten points, eight rebounds, one block. Shot at forty-nine percent from the field, twenty-nine percent from three. Not great on three and a half attempts per game, but you know he's not going to be a three-point shooter at the next level, at least not right away. They also had some great signings. Darius Baisley is a guy with a lot of potential coming over from the Oklahoma City Thunder slash the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Lonnie Walker had a couple of big time performances in the playoffs, and he's a guy that we've seen can give people, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of good quality basketball off the bench. And then Dennis Smith is going to come in and be a great backup point guard from day one for the Brooklyn Nets. And I really like their additions, you know, no big splashes, subtle additions, and I like it for the Brooklyn Nets. Now let's take a look at the lineups this year. Um, you know, this is just not a lot of star power, but overall just a solid lineup. Spencer Dinwiddie, you know, he's going to go out there, get you 15 to 18 points a game on good efficiency, and, you know, he's just going to be a, your leader from the point guard position. Uh, Cam Johnson is going to be a really good defender, be very efficient, average about 18 a game. McCall Bridges, you know, 28, 29 a game next year is what I'm expecting from him on close to 50, 40, 90 efficiency. Dorian Finney-Smith, he's out there to lock up and then knock down three balls. He's got to improve his three-point efficiency if he wants to stay on the court over Royce O'Neal. Um, and then at the five, you got Nick Claxton, a guy we really haven't talked about, but one of the better up-and-coming young centers in the NBA. Talk about a guy that they have drafted and then groomed and developed, and that is Nick Claxton, um, and they've done a great job. Taking a look at the bench here. The bench is pretty good. Um, I actually kind of like it. This is, you know, maybe Ben Simmons gets some PT Gets his head back on straight. Um, if not, it's Dennis Smith bringing the defense. Cam Thomas is going to be your sixth man of the year candidate, averaging 30 points. A, no, not 30, but averaging a good 15 to 20 a game if all things go right off the bench. With Lonnie Walker giving you know good minutes of defense and three point shooting. Same thing with Royce O'Neal. They'll have to find a center on the defense or on the second unit. But like I said, maybe Ben Simmons can get some run in at center. He can guard really one through five defensively. Or maybe they make a move, or maybe it's like a De'Ron Sharp who is inserted into that lineup. Uh, looking at the others here, you got Darius Baisley. Maybe it's Baisley that plays the backup center. Maybe it's even Noah Clowney, the rookie, that gets some burn at the backup center spot. Uh, but I'm really excited for Dariq Whitehead. I thought that was an exceptional pick. We're talking about a guy that was a projected top five pick before the injuries this year at Duke, uh, went out, was extremely efficient, which is sometimes, you know, that's the thing you don't really see out of those big body top recruits that are coming out of high school is, you know, that you're not seeing them be efficient. But with Dariq, you see that, and that's something to look forward to at the next level. So, yeah, that's why, that's my five reasons why I think that this Brooklyn Nets team can win a championship this year. Again, that's if everything goes right and then some, and even at that point, it's still going to be extremely hard for them. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 10K by the time the season starts. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.